Hello and welcome to Data Diversity Talks, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers around data. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Ryan Welsh, the founder and CEO at Kindy. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity. And this is my career in data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there and to be talking with people who help make those careers a little easier. To keep up to date in the latest data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. And today we are joined by Ryan Welsh, the founder and CEO at Kindy. And normally this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest. But in this podcast, your bio is what we are here to talk about. Ryan, hello and welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. So tell me, um, founder and CEO at Kindy, what is, so what do you, what is Kindy and what do you do? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're a natural language processing company, so we help enterprises get value out of their unstructured text data. Um, specifically, if you kind of think about NLP, it has five, now probably six major categories if you were to like look in an undergrad textbook. One of those categories is natural language search, um, and so we help uh, enterprises primarily with, with natural language search. Um, they can interact with our software via the, the search bar, or we've been seeing more and more um, chat interfaces. Um, so it's uh, <laughs> interesting times. Very cool. So who are typical users of your product? Yeah, the, the users can be internal or external folks. And so if you're an external customer coming to a website wanting to learn about a company's product and services, um, you can use Kindy Natural Language Search to ask questions of the unstructured text data on the site and actually be pointed to the answer um, on the site. So it's super easy to, to, to use. Um, and then also uh, internally, employees will use the, the service for searching policies and procedures. And so it's, or all types of other, of other stuff. So it's really anywhere where there's unstructured text and people are trying to find the answer. So tell me, so when you were very young, is this what you wanted to be when you grew up? You're like, I'm going to grow up and be a founder and CEO of a natural language company. Processing. No, no, not, not, not at all. Honestly, um, I'm kind of jealous of people that like have a, like a really early understanding of what they want to be. You know, there's some people that I, I grew up with or, or knew later on, they're like, I'm, I always knew I was going to be a lawyer or a doctor and they've been working on it since they were like nine. Like I'm su super jealous of those, those people. Not, that was not me. Um, you know, I have so many, so many interests that you just kind of, you just kind of hop around, um, and you just yes. find things that are, that are interesting. But I would say like the one thing that was always of interest to me, and maybe it's all those, those interests is understanding things. And I feel like, I feel like people who work in data are just curious and oh, yeah. their, their natural, you know, inclination is to then go, all right, well, let me go read something. Let me go download a bunch of data in a spreadsheet and see if I can understand it. And so, um, no, I didn't know that I was going to be a founder and CEO of a, of a software <laughs> startup, um, but I was always, was always curious about, about learning new things. And I think that just then came to, you know, analyzing data and looking at data and here I am. Uh, I can totally relate to that. I suffered from that jealousy myself. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it was like, it was like the other, like um, last year I was thinking about buying a home and like, it was, it was, it was funny, uh, which was the worst time to buy a home particularly in the, in, the, in the Bay Area, everything was like 100% more than, than the, the year before. But like immediately downloaded a bunch of data from, you know, I think it was Zillow or Redfin or one. And I have like basically the years, you know, two or three years worth of housing data with square footage. And I'm applying, you know, statistical models and predicting home prices. And, you know, and this is, this is, this is in the hour that I have before bed. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Well, I love it. Well, so how then did you get from from uh, to where you are? Like, where did you start out? What did you study? Yeah, my my um, my my undergrad degree is, is actually in, in anthropology with a, with a minor in, in math. And then I went and did a, a graduate degree in applied math, which is basically just uh, at least in this instance um, e economics. Um, and then I went and did a uh, economics uh, and like quantitative finance. Um, and then I went and did an MBA at the University of, of, of Notre Dame. Um, and when I got out from the University of Notre Dame, I actually started working for um, a group of folks in the DC area, um, helping them commercialize technologies coming out of national laboratories. 
And so there's a lot of like really cool tech that the national labs create, whether it was like low orbit satellites, um, defensive cyber capabilities, um, um, uh, quantum cryptography. And so it was like all this really cool technology. And I was like, man, you know, uh, you know maybe I could start a business uh, around something in the, in the deep tech space, um, which then kind of led me to, to think about you know, where is the world going? And, and, you know, in 2012 with deep learning, making some pretty significant improvements, I kind of focused on um, the natural language space. And so that's how I kind of like evolved to, to, to get here, just kind of having a major macro thesis on kind of where the world was, was, was going and then taking a bet on myself to, to build something, build something to solve some problems. Well, that's, that's very impressive. And that certainly took some courage uh so what made you finally pull the trigger and say okay this is what i'm doing this is this is what i'm going to develop and what made you take that leap yeah the the, the biggest um well, well so I'll, I'll, I'll get there but someone wrote me a pretty sizable check and said come back when you have a, a, a business which was hilarious uh and so and so i had i had a macro thesis that you know this was in 2013 2014 where i said by 2025 all knowledge workers would need some form of ai or machine learning enabled workflow and specifically around unstructured text data, because I felt like we were the bottleneck in the modern production process. And when I say we, I mean people, um, because we can store a bunch of data, we can move a bunch of data back and forth. We can even process a bunch of data provided that it's you know structured and computers can actually process it. But on the unstructured data side, like as soon as it hits our eyes, you and I can only read at a at a speed that is you know similar to what our parents and grandparents could read at. And so, and so we're still reading at a page a minute you know, and, right. and so it's kind of like, oh, that's, that's interesting. So like in a modern knowledge economy, we're effectively the bottleneck in this modern production process. And so it was like, could you create technologies to kind of amplify the productivity of people to kind of increase that, that output around these knowledge intensive tasks, which underlying those tasks was unstructured text data. Um, and so, you know, just kind of having that, that macro thesis, uh, I asked around for some technical co-founders and a, a, a gentleman that I was I was working with here an early investor in in, in Kindy um, I got back to his office and he pulled out his checkbook and he wrote me a hundred thousand dollar check and said come back when you have a business wow. <laughs> and I was like guess I need to start a business now and uh <laughs> that's amazing that's quite the story that's that's a, that's very nice yeah it, uh, he's an incredible incredible angel investor in the in the the DC area um, his name is his name is Jim Hunt. So I'll say his name because he's a he's a venture capitalist over at Lovrock Ventures here in in DC. Even though Kindy, we're based in in the the Bay Area, so I'll give a shout out to to Jim. There's probably several dozen people like me that that Jim had had done that to. He's also a professor over at at uh, Georgetown and teaches um, entrepreneurship and venture capital over there. So just an incredible incredible person, and he probably did you know single handedly built the DC tech ecosystem. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I love stories like that. I mean, it, it just uh, relationships are so important in, uh, yeah. in how we move forward. Visit dataversity.net and expand your knowledge with thousands of articles and blogs written by industry experts, plus free live and on demand webinars covering the complete data management spectrum. While you're there, subscribe to the weekly newsletter so you'll never miss a beat. So tell me, I mean, with all this experience and in your uh, diving into this, so what is your definition of data? Yeah, my, my definition is, is uh, and this is a bit of a loosey-goosey de definition, is uh, any information that is annoying to comprehend manually. <laughs> uh, and so it's like it, and, yeah. and so it's like you know if you have you know two cells in an excel spreadsheet where it says like 2021 revenue 2022 revenue yeah. that's probably not data because you can look at it and be like oh 2022 revenue was higher or lower than 2021 but if you have data going back 50 years or information going back 50 years and you want to know that, hey, how much did, did it go up compared to 50 years ago? And you're now doing changes in that. Like you've now crossed over into the realm of that's data, even though it's pretty small data. It's not, you know, terabytes and petabytes of, of, of data, but it's it's large enough to be annoying to just quickly comprehend manually. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I love that definition. <laughs> That's fantastic. You know, and, and with these predictive modeling uh, models that you've had and this analysis that you've done and, and your thesis, you know, do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Yeah, um, my marketing team's going to be a little upset with me because so we're going to make a, a, a <laughs> I'll say it here first. <laughs> um, but I, but I but I actually you know we'll come out with a, a kind of predictions thing for for 2023. But I actually think we're past peak data scientists, um, which is is a bit of a bit of a hot take. Uh, <laughs> um, and and the the reason the reason why is is and when I think of data scientists, it's it's not necessarily someone that can like just comprehend and use statistical tools to understand data. But like there's been this you know for the last several years. Um, um, like automation of certain data science techniques. So you can think about like auto ML, there's now like auto NLP. And so like, do you really need to like build algorithms? Do you need to do any programming to do complex statistical analysis anymore? Probably not, right? I mean, you still need to understand like what are the right techniques to it to apply to, to data and, 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 you know, what are the right techniques in actually understanding you know, any biases in the underlying data or the technique that, that you're using. So there's still like that type of, of data science, I'll call it like job that, that's going to be available. But like this previous notion of like, hey, I'm going to be a quant finance person or I'm going to be a data, data scientist, like writing my own code and doing my own analysis. Like, I think we're past, I think we're past that. Um, and I think we're past it because um, a lot of vendors have created a lot of really awesome capabilities to get around that. Um, I think it's a major bottleneck in the deployment and the success of AI and machine learning in, in the enterprise. Uh, and so I think a lot of people have, have gotten around like, hey, let's just skip the data science team and go right to developers and right to line of business. Um, or can we make it easier for the, the data science team to build models and pass those off to the developers and, and, and line of business people who actually put them in, into production. So candidly, I think we're, we're, we're past peak data scientists um and uh um yeah do you see it shifting then to need more analysts or yeah uh yeah yeah i i, I kind of think i kind of think about like data sciences as um evolving to be kind of like a business analyst mm -hmm. uh like you know if you think about a business analyst like um they're not a coder or they're not gonna right. you know write product code that that is that is right. you know world-class awesome code but hey they're, they're technical right and and they understand how to do sql queries and they know know some some things but they most importantly they know the business problem and they sure. know when like when like management comes to them and says hey can you model um can, can you show me what our you know how many red shoes we sold in kentucky <laughs> over the last 50 years like yeah. they'll come back with a visualization and, and show that 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 manager and they'll be able to manipulate the data and kind of do those do those queries and get that information back into a visualization capability and so i think like kind of yeah a data scientist is going to look more like a business analyst in the, in the future than than what was previously like this like hardcore data science <laughs> you know like uh, i remember in graduate yeah. school using what was the what was it was like sas sas the yeah. kind of more more advanced statistical packages like you know i remember writing you know uh, or programming to do advanced kind of statistical analysis on economic data and financial data back this was in graduate school so that'd be like 2003 2004 2005 um you don't need to do that anymore you know i upload housing prices to to a data robot or an h2o and i hit go <laughs> and it'll pick out the best model for me um and so that's that's where i think we're we're, we're going that's very cool uh, in, in, and then also on that fringe, then um, where do you see like data architects and modelers fitting in there? You know, I mean, to set up those really cool tools and to, to ensure they stand up and maintain that quality and, and so still, forth, so forth. Yeah, still critical, still, still, yeah. still crit critical um, folks. I, I mean, I, I think I think that's um, still a hard problem for, for a lot of, of enterprises is like pulling all this data together, getting the right, right kind of like, um, um, just like working environment for for people to take to to get value out of the data that that an enterprise has. So I think I think all that's still gonna maintain you know some 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 strength there. But yeah. it's like I don't know you know maybe it's just me, but I kind of like 
you know, envision like this data scientist as like the, like the sexy thing where it's like, I'm going to go do this awesome thing and don't bother me for a month. And I'm going to give you insights that you've never seen before. And your yeah, mind's going to yeah. be blown and your hair is going to be blown back and it's going to be incredible. And so it's, I feel like that, that is kind of like, we're a bit, we're a bit past that, but, but in a, but in a good, a, a, a good way, right. Where it's kind of like, you know, do yeah. I really want to go back to, to, to writing like SAS programming for advanced statistical? Absolutely not. Right. We yeah. want to, we want to make it super easy. So maybe, maybe data scientists can focus on, you know, higher value things than, than some of the lower value stuff that, that was, that was kind of um, backlogged. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launch pad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTalks for 20% off your purchase. Very cool. Uh, definitely a bigger ROI in that. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And I think there's a bigger yeah. ROI in, in text data. And so I, I kind of have this you know, if I were to compare things to like uh, financial markets, um, I would say like the edge that people can get now is all in text data and all in unstructured text. Because I feel like all the structured numerical data has been manipulated and modeled and, you know, combed over because it was easy to, to, to look at and easy to analyze and easy to apply um, statistical models to. And I think like the real edge in, in anything is getting those insights out of unstructured data which is really where the world's been going for the last you know 10 10 years now with you know whether it was computer vision or you know uh, video analysis and now just all the incredible stuff that's coming out in natural language processing like that is an incredibly hot field that i think is, is really compelling and super interesting indeed so then what advice would you give to people looking to get into a career in some aspect of data management, whether it be an analyst or a data scientist or. Yeah. Um, uh, do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, like, you know, when, when I, when I, I, I say that, like, you know, um, I, don't know I, I feel, I don't know. It, it's, it's, you, you, just, you just gotta, you just gotta go do it. I mean, there's, there's things that you need, you need to, to learn. So when you're, you're doing an advanced kind of more, you know, more advanced statistical analysis, you know, you don't, you want to understand the techniques that, that, that you're using. So one of the like potential downfalls of like all these automated tools is that they're all automated and you actually don't know what's going on under the hood. Whereas like previously, like I remember my parents telling me about math. They're like, I know math because, you know, we had to do it, you know, really manually. And I'm doing it on like a TI-83 calculator and plotting charts and and, and, and stuff stuff like that. Right. And, and so yeah. like one of the challenges is you start to then like not really under, understand the, the underlying fundamentals. So like, if you're really interested, I would like recommend folks to like really get down to the nitty gritty of like understanding all the different techniques. Um, um, but then specifically understanding kind of what types of data you want to look at. Um, because it's 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 funny, like you know, when you talk to someone in the AI space, and and uh, you know, friends will say, "Oh, Ryan, you work in the AI space, and this person over here works in the AI, AI space. You should you should get together." Then I'll talk to the person, and they're in computer vision, and I'm in NLP, and we have nothing to talk about. <laughs> we have we have nothing to talk about. Uh, you know, maybe we can you know bond a little bit over transformer models and stuff like that, which is kind of more more common these days for 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 this kind of uh, analyses, uh, but. You know, you're really going to have to focus your your tool set on the type of data that, that you're going to want to look at. And so, you know, maybe there's a type of data that really appeals to people. And if so, you know, focus mm -hmm. focus on that. Learn the tools that are that are best for for that, and then just just get after it. Yeah. So, you know, with data scientists and analysts, those are are a couple of you know degrees that people can major in. You know, but what's not being taught in school? What's what's missing from that curriculum for the practical is it is it just learning the tools and and the technology and how do you keep up to date on the latest tech yeah <laughs> uh well i i read I tons of tons of, pa of papers um so i'm like mm. i'm like still like just uh, like in in the the, the research so I, I love like just reading all the the research articles so you can like follow folks yeah. on on twitter and uh, linkedin and there's a lot of people that are that are posting just awesome stuff that's consistently coming out and you know I'm like in our, our Slack channel, I'm like consistently posting like the new bleeding edge AI papers from, from archive. And it's just like, 
it's it's uh, my my team's like, all right, we get it. Like, like, like stop, stop stop posting all this this new stuff. So I'm I'm, const- I'm constantly I'm a voracious reader, so I'm reading all that 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 uh, all that information. So that's how I generally stay up to stay up to date on things. And then as as far as like the the different different tools, like you know, it's it's really just I, I think about like um, just I mean just just doing it. Like if you're a curious person and you're getting into to to data science, then you're just going to be doing doing this stuff. I would imagine just in your your spare time. Uh, so just continue to do that. You'll get really good at it, and then someone's going to pick you up as a for for a job, and you'll be doing it professionally. And now you'll be doing what what you love professionally. I love it. So it, it's been kind of a theme through the through the conversation is be curious. Like curiosity has has moved you forward. It's it's a way to keep moving forward in anything and. Um, uh, it's a great message yeah and like like i said at the beginning like i think people that work in data are just naturally curious and, and then you're trying to pull down a data set to analyze it <laughs> and, <laughs> and also like there i mean ex- except for maybe some some startup founders um most people in, in uh, uh data science are, are a bit humble too probably <laughs> like in, in in this in the sense that like um i don't know the answer to the question so let me analyze it so like oh that's a curious question hmm let me go try to pull 10,000 articles and, and see what the answer is. Like people would normally wouldn't say that, or let me go right. see 50 years worth of housing data and see what the, the you know, how, if I can predict 2023 housing prices, like people normally wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't do that um, because it probably normally wouldn't, you know, question themselves going like, Hey, do I actually know the answer to this question? And, you know, a lot of times you'll say, no, I don't actually under, understand this. So let me actually use the tools that I have that I've learned, um, you know, from from undergrad or graduate degree or some accreditation course to actually then then pull, pull that pull that data. Um, I, I will also say, probably a, a critical thing has probably become more and more important is really understanding like the business case for it. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges today in, in the enterprise that that we see is is just not a clear connection between the folks that are kind of doing the more advanced modeling and like the business outcome and what the line of business is, is trying to doing and try to try to do. And so like, if you're in a data science course or you're a statistics major or something like that, if you can take business courses and just really understand like, mm-hmm. Hey, what's the business actually trying to do? Like, what is marketing trying to do with this? <laughs> you know? Oh, marketing's yeah. trying to target specific people so that they can get leads to fill the top of the funnel, which then goes to the salespeople um, who can then close deals, who can then generate revenue. Okay, now I know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, what 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 business KPIs I'm, I'm, I'm driving. So if there are just kind of basic business courses that, that, that you can take to really tie all that together, I think you'll have a, a, a leg up on, you know, most people in the, the data science space. That's very sage advice. Is, um, is there a couple of resources that you are your go-to that your favorites for your articles and research? Um, that's, that's a great question. I, I actually, I actually can't think of any top, top of mind because I just pull from like all the, the social networks. And so, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. folks that just, that just post stuff. So again, whether it's Twitter or, yeah. or LinkedIn or, um, you know, Google alerts, um, and stuff, stuff like that. I just pull all that and Love I can't it. say I remember where the actual URL. Is <laughs> to, but... <laughs> Your favorite source is through networking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. Well, Ryan, this is amazing. Thank you so much. So, and I'll be remiss if I uh, don't ask. You know, if people want to find out more about Kindy, where should they go? Oh yeah, they should. They should definitely go to Kindy.com. www.kindy.com. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like you have, you have to say that. And then, and then you know, we have we have tons of white papers there. You know, folks can tons of content on the the, the site. People can reach out. Um, happy to set up demos and just talk to anyone and kind of share more about about what it is that that we do i think i think the natural language search space is just a super compelling and interesting space right now a lot of companies are are popping up large and small a lot of money from the venture capital space is, is going into um, natural language search so um yeah they should definitely definitely check us out and you know always happy to to chat with people i love it well, thank you so much. Anything else you want to add before we wrap it up? Uh, no, I think I think that's 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 everything. Um, hope, hopefully, hopefully it was it was uh, you know it provided some some good advice to the folks out there. 
Oh, very sage advice. So really appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. And for all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date on the latest podcast and the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational articles, blogs, and webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. (laughs) 